All right, I got a phone call, so I had to stop there. I guess if you're doing four tubes per tray, that's four on each side for each side of each cable. Uh, 16 zip ties per tray. Uh, 10 times three is 30. Six times three is 15. So 48. I guess you need 48 zip ties for this. Just if you know, you need to know. So, 100 pack should cover two trays of four tubes worth. I'm sorry, two closures. Funny thing about college is got like four, maybe five degrees. I honestly don't even remember. Got a four, I think. Two bachelors, two associates. Uh, learn all this math and stuff, and you don't use most of it. Seems like most of the math you do is basic: adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. Of percentages and fractions. But other than that, even in designing stuff, you know, designing maps and stuff, it's a little basic math. You know. It's very interesting the stuff you learn in college that you don't use. Uh, honestly, you know. Nowadays, it's probably better off just learning the trade. You're gonna make a whole lot more money and not be in debt. <clears throat> but you need to start out young because you're gonna be traveling a lot. You may be working a lot of overtime. It's the perfect thing to do when you're 18 years old. Okay. Again, make sure your tubes are separated over here, and we're going to go ahead and anchor these down. Um, I would do it by color, so I'm going to put the blue in the middle, and I'm going to put the orange next to it, then green, and then brown.
guys can be a pain in the butt, by the way. But you can pull up with your finger if you've done it. It'll work with them enough. There's a way to wiggle them and make it work. I would try to pull this back so you can see it better, hopefully. themselves come with zip ties but only enough for the amount of trays that came with the closure and usually only one zip tie per two which you need to it's kind of ridiculous if you ask me why would you just say one it's one per but anyways just get you a hundred pack and in your splice of gear. I usually keep a couple on my truck, a couple packs of splice tubes. Keep a couple of everything because if you're on call like me, you never know what you're going to need and depending on what went down, you may want to get out there fast, get it back up as quick as you can and not have to fool with running back to the warehouse to get supplies. Or literally just to take it a trip. <laughs> Way to check to make sure you've done these you know, tight enough is give them a tuck. So if they pull out, they don't pull with all your might, but give them a reasonable tug. Like I said, okay, so I was telling you there's that end portion that we cut. Those are coming off the end. That's from earlier. That's fine. That is more than fine. What you don't want is that happening in the middle. That happens in the middle, that's bad. You're gonna have a short splice then. Not something you want. Which we may have happened today. You may see that. There's a way to Usually ways to work with it. Unless it's super short, and then yeah, that's gonna suck really. But again, still ways to work with that. It won't suck worse, but that's why you keep one loop in, loop in the basket, so you can access more bow tube if you need to. Mistakes or repairs, etc., etc.
Okay, so tray number one. We're gonna take these fibers and just kind of lay them in here. Uh, we'll tell you a quick way to measure these real quick. Um, what I found is easiest. You can measure all four pretty accurately. Oh man, we got one of them situations I was telling you about. Oh man, that's not a good sign. That means there's probably more like that. Um, so this fiber I'm working with, a little backstory, it's been sitting on a reel for 12 years. Uh, uh, yeah, that sucks. Um, so basically what just happened is I had a, a fiber that was just laying here and I saw it broken in half. Um, hopefully that was something I did and it's not the fiber being damaged somewhere itself. Uh, but one way to test that is you can take your finger and kind of run it along it just to save you some time. And it'll break wherever the weak points are. Um, unless you just want to risk it. You know, that's an option too. So I've got weak points on the end here that are breaking, which is normal. Okay, so I didn't have any more break so so far just that fiber so that means it must have got caught on something um, that happens that means it was my fault okay so I'm testing these others give them a slight bend and roll okay no nothing nothing came apart there okay I'll tell you a more aggressive way to do that you can actually take the fiber, wrap twirl them around your finger, and then run your finger down it. I would not recommend doing it with all four buffer tubes at the same time. Uh, you're probably going to break some. I'm trying that. Uh, unless you had some kind of lubricant on it or something, then it might work. But anyways, so aside from Shorty over here, uh, take all four of these. What I would do is measure it to each splice pack. I'm trying to think of how to say this visually. And basically this is gonna land on this side. And we need to measure these all the same length first because we've got some here on the the ends that are shorter than others, and that's going to make you have a bad day when you're trying to let me be even first. Okay, so, I've got those these length. Maybe I just cut off like two inches, so, so they all land in the same place for measurement purposes. Okay. As I've said, fiber does not want to do what you want it to do. It wants to do what it wants to do. So it's going all over the place when I'm trying to neatly wrap it here. Just part of it. Okay, so I'm going to make one clean sweep around here, around the tray, and I'm going to pick, I want this tray of that pack, that pack, that pack, that pack. For that to happen, looks like I need to take these two packs out here for it to cleanly wrap around. No. No. I'll say the better way to do that is to leave all packs, but if, I'm, if I do that right there, I'm gonna have a very sharp bend, and that's the better way of doing that. Um, you do have a little trail between here, between the packs, so you can technically retain the packs. Um, but the fact of the matter is, you really don't need those other two packs on the end, and here's why. If all four tubes are all spliced in all four packs here, and this is the main line. Anytime you come in here to change something or splice something, you're going to be splicing to the main line, which so say you take two fibers off the main line to splice to, well now you have two open slots and packs up top from the two you just broke. So that's, that's why you technically don't need those at the bottom. It'd be good to have them. You know, if you can retain them or maybe put them in the bottom of the closure, key parts like that, but it will look a whole lot neater. I've learned personally just measure boom, 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 and then pop to the bottom two packs out. 
the way you pop these out, you get you a flathead screwdriver. There's a little kind of wet wedge it in between, twist it, and come right out. those to the side for now and you put them in basically what I was saying put all your parts extra parts in the capacity here that way people have in the future if they do need them like I said with the design of our network you're not going to need them because no. if you're tapping in you've just made spots available uh, unless you've got splitters if you've got splitters that does change that but you're out in the middle of nowhere like this Probably don't want those splitters. It's not gonna go so well. All right, now I'll make sure both sides of this are the same length. Okay, another even steven. So now I'm gonna take these and I'm gonna bundle them up in here. Um, one of the tricks I'll tell you about a short fiber like that. Instead of trying to splice to the you know the other end, the other side, the other cable, other buffer tube, other fiber that correlates with that pillar and tube um, directly off that little shorty, you can actually the little piece that broke off, you can actually splice that back on to make it longer. Um, can sometimes make it easier. If you're going for low loss, I wouldn't recommend it because now you've got two splices in one tray and one fiber right next to each other, which increases the loss. Um, but depending on your network, it's not going to matter. Ours, it's not going to matter. Uh, somebody else's, yeah, it possibly could matter. Again, anytime you have splitters and stuff like that, you know, it doesn't have as much of a budget for loss. Okay, that's not done. We're just setting that to the side and now we're moving to the next tray to anchor the tubes into the next one. Uh, one reason I like to do this this way instead of going ahead and start the splicing on that is because just what we saw earlier with that fiber that was broken. Um, I want to see if that happens to other tubes because I may, you know, depending on how, if I have a bunch of tubes that are broken or they're about to be right now, I'm getting caught around this daggum chair. Like I told you, fiber, man, it will do everything you don't want it to. So just, just be prepared for that. It is the finickiest crap in the world. If you're a you know, lineman or electrician, you got this hard copper that, you know, you got to be careful with, of course. Because I do, you know, and I work for a power company, so do that stuff too but uh it's a different it's a different ball game the big thick copper wire you know or aluminum you know won't spin around a hundred times generally around a tiny little chair like that or something like that or get tangled up they will you ever uh Uncooled some guy wire without putting a uh, harness on it to keep it from going everywhere. That that's gonna make for a bad day for you. But the boy fiber, like I said, it's it can be the biggest pain in your butt, but a big money maker. So. Do it. Right now, I'm trying to get the next four tubes. I like to do them in order. So next, I'm going to get slate through black. So slate, white, red, black. Said, don't freak out if you step on it. Totally just stepped on the fi fibers, the bare fibers. Okay, 
kind of rolling my fingers through them, like I was talking about earlier, before I take the time to anchor them all to the tray, because on the first set we found one was broken. Okay, so those four appeared to be good. Like I said, fibers finicky, it can be very deceiving. Everything can look and appear fine, and then you go to you know, splice it, or you go to fasten it in, and boom! find a bunch of stuff that just did not show itself to you before. We did the same thing here. I feel a kind of roughness in this, and, and I shouldn't feel a roughness. So, one thing I'm going to look for is there's probably strings that I missed. Yeah. See, that's a string. So, you shouldn't feel, it should all be smooth. So, it looks like I missed two strings. So, I'm going to cut these off. Make sure they're not fiber. Then you cut them though. And I still feel a roughness. Sometimes I will say a little roughness may not be a string. Apparently I missed a bunch of strings. Dumbass. Uh, still feel the roughness even when there's no strings. And that's because there's some residue off of the strings on it. Kind of like a powdery. Honestly don't know what it is. Uh, okay, so it feels like I might be okay with these. Yeah. Cut on the length. Unfortunately I had to cut off a lot more on that one because they're the tips uh, broken. These are, again, where earlier when we you know, did that little circle cut on the cable in a different video, uh, we created some little nicks. So I told you there's going to be a bad part of the fiber we could just cut off. That's it. That's that bad part. Okay. So counting up, I'm going to put slate in the middle. Then white. Then red and then black. This is so hard to do without punching over in front of the camera. I'm going to be honest with you. I will be getting a tripod. Or so, just hold it up with one hand. Not a big deal, but that's it tied the wrong color down right there. It don't really matter, but it matters to me, so. things about having a job like say fiber optics or network analyst uh, things like that um, interesting things I find is 
people have no idea what you do. Um, it's a very... It's interesting because when people ask you what you do, it's... You can give them a nutshell version, but they really, just from that nutshell version, still have no clue what you actually It's, uh, it's like, say, you become a nurse. People know what you do. You know? They don't know every little detail, no. But gen in general, they understand. You know? They give people medication, check their blood pressure. You respond when monitors go off and stuff. Uh, and many other things that are, take a lot of heart to be able to do. If you're an electrician, people generally understand what you do. They get it. I'm not saying they know how to do those things, but they get it. They see what you do. So it's one of those jobs people don't see it. All they see is these cables hanging on telephone poles. They have no idea what's inside. That there's thousands of fibers in here. They have no idea that you know what that it's actually just glass, you know, literal glass. Have, have people call them wires. You know, have people look at me and say, hey, be careful because I work for the power company. You know, don't get shocked. And it's like, okay, well, I'll try not to with this fiber optic cable. But it's, it's very interesting because uh, when you get a job like that where you do something that is, I guess maybe futuristic would be, not, not a well advertised uh, field. It's a uh, it's a very hard question to answer when somebody says, "What do you actually do?" Uh, just very interesting when you get in that situation. If you haven't been, it's uh, kind of dumbfounded because there's so much going on in your head and you're like, what part do I tell them? Uh, I mean, but most of the time you just don't end up saying, I do stuff with fiber. Or they'll say, my network hands, you do stuff with computers? Yeah, yeah. It's usually easiest to just say yeah, when really not. That's, probably mostly incorrect in many cases and I'm just saying that because it's very hard to convey. And somebody asked me one time, you know, when I was a network analyst, they said, what do you do? You work on computers, right? And I was like, no. They're like, well, that's what network analysts do. I was like, no, no they don't. Uh, I mean, not an actual network analyst does not work on computers. You know, that would be a computer technician, uh, network analyst. Uh, and I'm not even a normal network analyst because there's so many different types of network analysts. You have people that work on servers, you have people that work on switches, people that work on routers, you have people that do pro uh, programming, uh, configuring databases, backing them up, and people that work in so many on the hardware side, you know, fixing the hardware only off of, say, servers and whatnot. There's just so many different things. There's there's cloud computing. And there you go. I told you, it's pretty easy to cross one. Just cut that sucker out and pull it. That wasn't the right one to pull. Dang, it. Invention. 